you're passionate about transforming retail operations and improving performance, plus you're accountable for key change projects and programs in your company, then you're in the right place. Welcome to the Retail Transformation Show with me, Oliver Banks. Hello and welcome to the Retail Transformation Show. This is episode 21 and I'm your host, Oliver Banks. I'm excited about this episode. It's a topic that I feel quite passionate about. But if this is the first time that you're tuning into the Retail Transformation Show, remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. Now, the term retail apocalypse is a statement that's been escalating over the past couple of years. I'm sure you've seen it. However, this is now commonly being renounced by industry experts. Instead, retail experts are declaring retail isn't dead. Mediocre retail is. Or boring retail is. But what exactly do we mean by mediocre retail? What is boring retail? Because let me tell you about the businesses that have unfortunately fallen into administration or who have had to issue profit warnings or have taken some other drastic form of action. Now, I'd be happy to bet that none of them set out a strategy to be a mediocre retailer. None of them sat in a board meeting or a strategy meeting and decided to be boring. None of them. And they didn't realise they were boring. They didn't just accept that they were a mediocre retail and go, eh, that's all right. So how do you know that you're not just another mediocre, boring retailer? So in today's episode, we're diving into really explore what is mediocre retail. How do you know if you're doing it? And ultimately, what should you do about it? Let's get into it. The first part is to really get on the same page in terms of understanding mediocre retail. What do we mean by it? Well, for me, it's a retail operation that makes customers go, meh, it's not bad, but it's not great either. It's average. It's expected. It's okay. But unfortunately, in today's retail marketplace, customers have decided that OK is not good enough. Meh won't cut it anymore. But what does mediocre retail look or feel like? So I'd like you to come on a little journey with me. Come with me. Unless you're driving right now, at which point, eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. But come with me on a shopping trip. Imagine. Imagine that you're out at the shops. It's a reasonably busy day and the weather is nice. You needed to get something important done earlier on today, but that's done and it's off your mind now. So you have a bit of spare time to shop and there are some things which you've been meaning to buy recently. So you're walking down the mall or the street. Again, it's reasonably busy. So you're dodging people left and right and you see this shop. Actually, in the past, it used to be one of your favourite shops. So you take a look at it. Now there's a lot going on in the shop window. So much so that you don't really know where to look. It's pretty chaotic. But your mind is prompted back to some advertising that you saw. They had some sale on, but you can't remember what it was, or even if it's still on, or if it's relevant. So there's nothing saying you must go in today. But you still remember the brand favourably and you decide to wander in. As you walk in the door, there's no clear journey within the store. Like the window, in fact. There's just a lot going on. There's music playing. It doesn't seem relevant, though. And it's actually a bit distracting. The store is a bit tired looking. You see bonks and scrapes to the furniture. Subconsciously, you're left wondering. If that's how they look after the store, then that's probably how they look after products too. The displays are messy and a bit shopped over, but you decide to browse on. No one from the store team approaches you as you shop, but you do approach one of them. Conversation is minimal, but actually you end up talking more about functional things. Checking the price, checking the stock, and a lukewarm welcome when you enter and exit the changing room. 
Now, the product is fine. It's acceptable, except for the fact that one of the items that you wanted to get isn't actually in stock. But you're told that you can probably get it from the website anyway. Prices are mid-level, not cheap, not expensive, right in the middle of the market. But there is this widespread discounting going on across the store, which you think is a bit unusual as no other stores on the street were discounting heavily. There's no obvious sales on. But you're not complaining. You get a bit of a bargain, right? But you have to remember that mediocre retailers are also training their customers to only accept discount prices or coupons or offers. And the effect of this is a higher volume of discounted transactions and purchases get delayed until later on when they can pick up the same product at a lower cost. And if you're regularly adding coupons or offers or discounts, customers are trained to not even see that discount anymore. They don't trust the original price and they're only looking at the current selling price. But it can be like a drug. It's really hard to get off, particularly when you start analysing it and you look at the like-for-like impact. But back into our little visualisation here, and we're back in the shop. You decide to pick up a product, and you go to the checkout to make the purchase. And there's a bit of a queue, but we all love a good queue, right? It's certainly a good chance to look at the mess behind the tills. So you're served. Now, the customer service is acceptable, it's okay, but it's certainly nothing to get you grinning as you make the payment. You leave the store promptly and continue on your day, but as you exit, you're already thinking about what's next on your to-do list, and you go about your day. Later on, you're at home. You remember that you didn't manage to get everything that you wanted, so you go onto the website and... Fortunately, there is a functioning online store to buy those missing items. But that online shop is a bit ugly. It's a bit clunky too, but eventually it does work. And as you're checking out, you see that there are some lovely integrated multi-channel offerings like Click and Collect. Well, that sounds great, you think. But also you suddenly remember that it's pretty standard now. Everyone does that, right? Now, you get the picture You can relate to experiences like that, I'm sure. Maybe not everything at once, but these are some of the things that are beginning to drive what we're calling mediocre retail. No longer do we live in a world where average is enough. Here's some average stuff at average prices. Want to buy it? It doesn't cut it anymore, right? Customers demand more. And I'm sure you know that. So if I've helped you, conjure up a picture of mediocre retail, boring retail. The next big question is how do you know if you're a classic case of mediocre retail? Remember what I said, the companies that have fallen into trouble, they haven't been thinking they're mediocre. They haven't been just accepting that they're boring retailers. So self-awareness is critical here. It's critical, absolutely critical. It's all too easy to see the shiny halo on the top of your retail brand, to give yourself a good pat on the back. But it's essential to take a long, hard look at your retail operation and offering from a customer's perspective, as well as from a a classic business perspective as well. So look at your marketing, your advertising. Is it clear? Is there a call to action? Is it on brand? Do customers know what they need to do next? Put yourself in your customer's shoes. How does your store appear from 200 yards away, from 100 yards away, from 50 yards away? What does it look like as you get much closer? And as you enter, how does that feel? What's the experience like in store as you browse and select products? In fact, is your store actually about stocking and selling products? Or do you have more of a showroom type model that is integrated closely to your online offering. And how about the actual purchase? What does that look like and feel like? And in our omni-channel world, how does that whole experience and proposition all stack up? How does online work compared to physical stores? Now, as you look through all of these different layers and a whole lot more, of course, you've got to ask yourself, how will you know if you are up to scratch? 
How will you measure yourself fairly? You're going to need some criteria, which will help you to critique the shopping trip with the aim of making improvements and ultimately transforming your retail operation. However, not recognizing the status quo truthfully is an important part of my transformation trifecta. Without this, you will find that there is not going to be a strong will or a strong desire to change. In turn, you'll find that your transformation efforts are unsuccessful without strong stakeholder support within the business. And this is going to really frustrate you and your team. There's going to be a feeling of unfulfilled potential. What could have been? Now, if you want to find out more about my transformation trifecta, which lays out the three essential elements to make your transformation a success, you can download it for free from today's show notes page over at obandco.uk slash 21. That's obandco.uk slash 21. Now, there are three more signs that I wanted to share with you today to help you see if you are running a mediocre retail business. Number one, you can't describe your unique proposition in a simple but specific way. Maybe you don't really know what it is that you do. Maybe you're trying to add too much in there. You've got so many different sides of your business. Or perhaps you're too broad. And it's preventing you from really going after what it is you specialize in. Number two, you have no operating model in place. Or at least you can't point to a physical document or an electronic document that says this is what we do and how we do it. As a result, things like cost control and other performance metrics become a bit mysterious. Meanwhile, your store managers and leadership teams are focused on solving common problems, but end up not communicating it widely. They're busy spending their time and energy to overcome big common problems that everyone has to deal with. And in place, they're neglecting or deprioritizing the tasks that are going to help them win their local market or look after their local teams. And finally, number three, there's an inability to drive change in the business. Sure, you might be aware of the latest retail trends by reading in the press, but they seem tough to realise. And in your business, it's always such a pain in the bottom to drive changes through the whole business. So those are three telltale signs that you might be running a mediocre retail operation, or at least at risk of turning into a mediocre retail operation in the future. And you have to be careful As we've already heard, those mediocre retailers have had their life expectancy cut by some very clever retail commentators and experts. So let's look a bit more positively. What should you do to turn things around? What should you do to transform your potentially boring and mediocre retail offering into a fully fit, lean, mean retail machine? Well, Probably not me, actually. (laughs) That's probably not a good route to go down. So a lean retail machine, let's, let's go for. Well, first things first, you must build a goal for your transformation. Next, identify your target customers. Get to know them, understand them. Define a proposition that will excite them. You want to target your ideal customers with your proposition. Sure, you don't want to not accept any other customers. But it is better to be the favourite of your target customer instead of everyone's meh store, right? You don't want to be the average. Now you're going to need an operating model to help you make this unique proposition achievable. Make it repeatable. Make it predictable from a business perspective and brilliant from a customer perspective. Now an important element of your operating model should be around some form of experiential retail, something that is going to evoke an emotion or form a memory in your customer's mind. That can be a powerful, powerful way to build brand loyalty as well as get word out about your business. 
Now, the world of experiential retail can get a little bit woolly, a little bit fluffy. So if you've not already heard it, you might want to go back and listen to episode 18 of the Retail Transformation Show. And you can find that at obandco.uk slash 18. And finally, but certainly not bottom of the pile, please don't forget to think about your people, your team too. Your store colleagues are the lifeblood of your stores, of your brand. If you forget about them, how can they possibly deliver the proposition that you need to offer your customers? So, just like you considered your ideal or your target customers, who are your ideal members of staff? And what is it you need to do to become the best company to work for, for that ideal staff member? What's your proposition for your employees? So once you have your overall business proposition and an operating model down on paper, you now need to work out how you're going to make it happen. Because as you full well know, if you don't realize the changes, then the transformation is a complete failure. It's just words and hot air. So make sure you know how to deliver that transformation once you've identified it. So after today's episode, you should have a better understanding of what mediocre retail is. We've talked about how you can tell if you're running mediocre, boring retail operations. And I hope you've got a bit of a game plan to transform your business. Now, if you'd like to download a free copy of the Transformation Trifecta, which I mentioned earlier, you can do that at obandco.uk slash 21. This free guide helps to define the three elements which are essential for successful transformation. It's going to help you to identify the signs and the symptoms if these elements are not at full health. And then it's going to give you a list of actions and remedies to help you overcome your challenges. And once again, you can pick up a copy of this for free at obandco.uk slash 21. Just before we close out, here's a key takeaway, a really important point for you to consider. So you've heard the term that retail isn't dead, but mediocre retail is. Well, no company, nobody thinks that they are mediocre. That is an assessment that really only customers can make. And if you can't see the reality for your business, then you're never going to know whether you're a boring, mediocre retailer or not. Perhaps that sounds harsh, but it's important to take a true self-assessment, an honest look at yourself to ensure that you recognize if you need to change and how you need to change. If you want to talk more about this, you can always get in touch, oliver.banks at obandco.uk or reach out via LinkedIn. I've got a couple of quick asks for you today, just at the end of the episode. So number one, if you've not subscribed in your favorite podcast app, please do so right now. It's a quick hit of the button, hit the subscribe button, and you will make sure that you don't miss any episodes in the future. And I've got some exciting things coming up. Secondly, if we're not already connected on LinkedIn, then please do search for me, Oliver Banks. Reach out, personalize that invite and say hello. Let me know that you're listening. And if we're already connected, then also reach out and say hello, because it's always great chatting to you. That's a wrap for today. So until the next episode, goodbye and have a great week. <laughs>